Welcome to the Retirement Made Easy podcast, a show created to be your go-to source for straightforward retirement advice. Best of all, it is presented in a language that you can understand. Are you ready for some straight talk on retirement planning without all the fluff? Well, you found the right podcast. Here's your host, certified financial planner, Greg Gonzalez. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Retirement Made Easy podcast. I'm your host, Greg Gonzalez. I wanted to take a minute and ask listeners for their help with something. So as I'm coming up with ideas and topics for future episodes, typically it's just conversations that I'm having with clients and prospective clients and podcast listeners that are reaching out for help. And I kind of use those conversations and spin them into an episode where I think the information and the wisdom can help other people. But as I've thought more about it, I also like hearing from listeners that are sending in their questions, either via email or going to the website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. At the bottom, you can submit your questions. So if there is a topic that you want to hear about, certainly submit whatever the question or topic or concern that you want in more information or maybe more help with. Don't be bashful. Send those episode ideas in. I always love receiving those. I cannot ask. My compliance department will not allow me to ask anybody for reviews. So I cannot say, hey, please give me a five-star review for the podcast. So I cannot do that. If you would like to, that's wonderful. That's appreciated. But my compliance will not allow me to ask for five-star reviews. However, they have no problem with me asking listeners for episode topic ideas and subject ideas for discussions on future episodes. So that's kind of my ask for help. If you want to hear something, go to my website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com, submit your question or your topic ID at the bottom, and I'll use it. I really promise. So I think this is episode number 141. I never thought I'd make it this far, but here we are going strong. So I believe I've probably talked about or at least discussed on a past episode, probably 85%, maybe 90% of popular retirement planning ideas or strategies or tips. Of course, there's some missing. There's some that I hold back because I can't give all of my secrets away. Of course, those are reserved for my clients and my business. But after three years of doing this podcast, I'm kind of getting to the point where I feel like I'm repeating myself sometimes, but I got to keep in mind that there's probably a very low likelihood that someone has listened to all 140 previous episodes and may have heard this topic before that I'm discussing. So, But on this episode, I wanted to talk just more generally about 401k plans and what I see and what I hear from people and kind of the misconceptions, the advantages of 401k plans, the disadvantages. And of course, a lot of this is going to be my opinion. So you can argue with facts and figures, but you can never argue someone's opinion. So I hope this conversation on 401ks will be insightful. You'll learn a little bit. You'll be able to see and understand maybe 401ks more. And hopefully you'll maybe find some useful information here that can help you. Before we get into that, I wanted to mention, hey, resources and things that can help you personally, go to my website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. Under the resources tab, you can download a lot of my free resources. I'm going to be adding more this upcoming year. And then for the people that want a 30-minute retirement coaching session, you can sign up for that right on the website. There's a calendar link. I have the opportunity to speak with quite a few podcast listeners, and that's been a lot of fun for me. So some of those people are looking for an advisor. Other people are just looking for help with their retirement planning, but maybe they're several years away from retirement. They just want to make sure they're on track. So doesn't matter. You can sign up for that 30-minute retirement coaching call right there on the website. All right, let's jump into this discussion today on 401k plans, misconceptions, how they work, and disadvantages, advantages, all that good stuff. And this is a topic, I mean, I could spend probably five hours talking about 401ks, but I won't do that to you. I wish, and I have said this on countless podcasts before, I wish 401ks were more uniform, but that will probably never happen. So the employer gets to determine 
if there's going to be a match in the 401k, right? So the 401k, it might have a really, really good match, like the best one I've ever seen. And I've mentioned this on a podcast before. Microsoft has a dollar for dollar up to the annual contribution limit. So what that means is, is if, if you're over 50 and you work for Microsoft, $30,000 is this year in 2023 is the contribution limit. So they will match dollar for dollar up to 30 grand in your 401k. That's the best I've ever seen. I have other clients that have 401ks through work and the match is nothing. There is no guaranteed match. I have other clients where there is a very low match. Maybe it's like 500 bucks or a thousand bucks a year. And then they have profit sharing on top of that, which it's discretionary profit sharing. So meaning it's not guaranteed, there may be nothing. It kind of depends on how well the company does. There are companies that have gotten rid of or frozen their pension plan, and Boeing is one of them. They're based here in St. Louis. A lot of clients that we work with and people that I have counseled over the years, they froze their pension plan a number of years ago. And I think it's the largest pension plan that's underfunded in the country right now. So they froze a number of years ago. But now for non-union employees, their match is dollar for dollar up to 10% of your earnings. There are other companies out there that have non-matching 401k contributions. And what that means is, is they'll put money in whether you are contributing to your 401k or not. Here in town, a company called Spectrum, they actually put in 3% for people, even if the participant or employee doesn't put in a dime, they get a 3% contribution from the company. And then there's other companies that they have this matching formula that's tiered. So if you contribute the first 3%, they'll match dollar for dollar, and then they'll do 50 cents on the dollar for the next 2% after that. So really, if you put in five, they'll match you four. And sometimes these tiered matching formulas, they can be a little confusing for people. I've run into this on multiple occasions. And what ends up happening is a lot of people don't end up getting the full benefit of the match because they don't understand it. I mean, I've talked to people that they understand 100% of the first 3%, but then they don't put in any more than that. So in my opinion, the easier a company's match is to understand the more likelihood people are going to take advantage of it fully. And I get to have the opportunity to speak to a lot of people who have 401k plans. Some of them have the Roth 401k option. Many of them do. That's becoming more and more popular. But others still don't have the Roth 401k option. And I mean, it's 2023. In my opinion, that is one of the things that should have changed a long time ago the matching, of course, is the company's discretion, right? I'm not going to argue that all companies need to be the same. I mean, I don't believe in that kind of oversight, but I do believe in, okay, let's at least have some equality in the standards of the 401k. And if one company can offer the Roth 401k, and I would argue that the Roth 401k is extremely beneficial to a large segment of the population, then I think that all 401ks should at least have the option. It's not requiring people to contribute to the Roth 401k, but at least give them the ability. And getting back to the matching for a second, I can't tell you how many people, now it's, I guess it'd be hard for me to, to kind of ballpark this, but I would say a large percentage, probably half or at least a third of people that I ask, whether they're clients or not, if I ask them, what does your company match at work? I would say at least half, maybe a third of them would say, I don't know. I started working for the company 12 years ago or 20 years ago. I don't know what the match is. I couldn't tell you. I can find out, but I don't know offhand. Now, there's a lot higher likelihood that they know the percent of their paycheck that they're contributing to the 401k. A lot of them can tell me that offhand, but the percentage of people that know what their company matches, I'm telling you, it's a lot less. And that's really, really a big problem. So, hey, there was a study, and I'll try to put this in the show notes, Fidelity, and they're a huge 401k provider that we run into, and Vanguard is another one, and Empower is a company that seems to be taking a big, big step in the 401k space. I mean, they're buying companies out and taking over plans. 
I'm seeing the name and power as far as a record keeper and custodian of 401ks much, much more frequently. But I Googled the average 401k balance by age, and this is from Fidelity. It was updated on January 20th of this year. And so what they did is they sorted it by age 55 to 64. The average account balance was, and this is at the end of 2021, before the big dip in 2022, the average balance is $256,244. And you might be thinking, oh, that's not bad. For the population of 55 to 64, the average balance, 256,000, that's not bad. But if you look at the median of all those accounts from people, again, ages 55 to 64, the median balance is $89,716, 89 grand. And so what that tells us, if you're not familiar with the difference between median and average, the average, which again was 256,000, that is really impacted more by the outliers, the people that have millions in a 401k versus nothing in a 401k. So the average, you add up all those balances and you divide by the number of participants, the number of accounts, and that's what you get, 256,000. Well, the median, it's not impacted by the outliers. I mean, it's kind of a truly balances like right in the middle of all the accounts, $89,000 in a 401k balance for the people, again, between the ages of 55 and 64. That's not good. That's not good at all. And again, that's the end of 2021. I would venture to say 2022 with the market being down, gosh, if they ran the study again today, it'd probably be less than 89,000. So that's the bad news is Americans, by and large, in their 401ks, they have undersaved for retirement. They're not ready. And again, I'm focusing on the 55 to 64 segment of the population of this study, just simply because they're probably closest to retirement and some of them may already be retired. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about was the cost of 401k plans. In general, 401k plans, the costs seem to be reasonable. And I think, generally speaking, the bigger the 401k plan that I'm analyzing or reviewing, the lower the costs seem to be. So that's something, of course, to keep in mind is there are costs associated with these 401k plans. And sometimes if it's a very small plan, with a very small company, sometimes the cost can be almost excessive versus with a bigger plan, let's say the Fortune 500 company 401k plan, well, the cost can be very, very low, which is, of course, good. The bad news is, is there's no consistency when I'm reviewing the investment options within 401k plans. So many of them will have a menu that you have to select from. Seldomly, I'll run into a company that says, okay, you can build your own investment portfolio in a brokerage type of account, but that's more rare when I see those. Typically, what i reviewing 401k investments, there's a lot of retirement date funds, it seems like, based on your age, and they just plug you into the formula and, okay, let's assume you'll be 65 in 2025. Well, you're going to be in the target retirement date 2025 fund. I'm always interested in how people pick their 401k investments. I was reading an article years and years ago, and what I found was the mutual fund companies, the investment companies, they did a study in 401k plans. And when people are selecting the investments, what they found is people would just look at like the first couple of investments starting alphabetically from A to Z, and they would just kind of get to A, B, C, and those are the ones that they would look at. They wouldn't even go to the bottom of the page and heaven forbid looking at the second page. And so what fund companies were trying to do, these investment companies, is change the name of their investment so it would be A or B. So there was a lot of like American funds and American Century, and, but it was a lot of Alliance Bernstein. Just I'm throwing names out off the top of my head, but they always wanted to be at the top of the list because they found that kind of people were just picking from the top of the list, so to speak. So the way they do it now more and more is the default is like a retirement date fund based on your age. And then you can go in and change it if you would like to. I talked to countless people that, They've never gone in and changed that retirement date fund. They just kind of stick with the default option. Because I'll ask people, how did you pick that choice? How did you end up picking that choice? And a lot of people will tell me, oh, well, the 401k company manages it for me. 
Fidelity or Vanguard, they manage that for me. And I hear that quite often. People think that the 401k is behind the wheel. In other words, they are choosing all the investments on your behalf, and that's just not accurate. So you as the participant, we as participants in a 401k plan are responsible for choosing and selecting the investments in our portfolio. They cannot do it on our behalf. Now, they do have a fiduciary duty. The administrators of the 401k plan have a fiduciary duty to put, to offer investments that are a wide range, of course, because you've got people maybe in their 20s that want to be very, very aggressive. And maybe you've got some older, more veteran employees that maybe are wanting to take less risk and they want maybe more conservative investments to select from. So the administrators of the plan, they need to offer a wide range of investment options that are prudent investment choices and also are good value. So they have to look at costs and things like that. And they have to review these funds every certain amount of years to make sure they're still a good fit for the 401k plan. There's certain 401k plans that I review that obviously they're not doing a very good job because there's funds and investment selections that should have been thrown out years and years ago. I'm actually reviewing one right now for somebody in Illinois, and she is invested in a fund that over the last 10 years, it hasn't made any money. Over the past five years, it hasn't made any money. It's actually lost money. Over the past three years, hasn't made any money. The last year, it's lost money. So it's like, okay, this fund, if you would have invested into it any segment of time, 10, 5, 3, 1, you would have lost money. It doesn't matter what period that you picked. There's no period where you actually would have made money investing in this fund. So those administrators of the plan, it's their fiduciary duty to kick that fund out, but that hasn't been the case. So they've kind of dropped the ball there. And I was reading another study, I think Fidelity came out with, and this was years and years ago. I wish I would have saved it. But they were analyzing all their 401k accounts and which ones actually perform the best. And as I was reading this article, I couldn't help but think of the calls that I get from clients that they'll say something like, oh, well, Bob at work, he's in the office next to me. He's making changes to his 401k. Should I make those same changes? And Sally at work, she's getting scared with the market and she's moving all of her 401k to the money market or to cash because she says things are only going to get worse. Should I do the same thing? And I describe that kind of behavior as kind of panicking, right? Panicking on long-term investments that we have. But what this study highlighted, there were a few takeaways from it. It's for the people that made frequent getting in and out of the market. And the higher the frequency of the selections moving in and out of different funds, the greater the likelihood that there was very low investment performance. So in other words, the people that just stuck with an investment portfolio and maybe rebalanced, they did the best. But the people that were trying to jump in and out of funds, like almost like day trading their 401k, and maybe they were moving in the market and then out of the market, there was the highest correlation with low investment performance. The more you traded in and out of these different funds. It's kind of like the analogy that I use. Money is like a bar of soap. The more you handle it, the smaller it gets. So again, the conclusion of this study of 401k plans at Fidelity that I read years and years ago was if you give people the options to select their own investments, a lot of times they can just behave badly and start like almost trading the funds. And sometimes there's some limitations, like you can only buy and sell funds so much in a 30-day period or something like that. But when you give people the ability to make these decisions, sometimes they can have adverse effects on their results. Let's talk about some advantages of 401ks, Roth 401ks, that kind of thing. Well, number one, it's a great way to get a match from your company. So again, if you are a listener out there that does not know what your match is, reach out to your benefits department and ask, hey, I'm just wanting to confirm what the match is on our 401k plan, because that's an employee benefit. I mean, that's as important as your health insurance coverage through work. So, and that somebody in benefits will be happy to help you with that. And probably they have something they can email you really quick. Now, most companies are going to have a vesting schedule. So meaning if 
it might be 20% a year for five years. So if you leave within, let's say year three, well, you maybe only be 60% vested. So the money that the company matched you during those three years was really only 60% yours. But if you stayed all five years and then you left to take an opportunity somewhere else, well, it's a five-year vesting schedule in this example. So you'd be 100% vested. So all the money that they match, you would be able to keep in that 401k account. It would be yours. And those vesting schedules are a way of kind of retaining employees. Another advantage, just kind of thinking about how people save In my experience, the 401k plan, and there's been a lot of studies on this, since 401ks are connected with the payroll, then employees or participants don't see the money. It's right out of their paycheck and into the 401k or Roth 401k, whatever it happens to be. However, if employees had to put it in their bank account and then write a check out every month or every payday to the 401k provider, guess what? A lot of those checks would never end up there because money finds a home. So a lot of what we do is behavioral finance. We have to behave properly. And that's why a lot of people have a hard time with budgets and sticking to a budget because just like the government, if you give people money, they'll spend it. They'll find a way. So that's why, again, 401k is right through payroll. It's out of sight, out of mind. It goes directly, comes out, and people don't ever receive that let's say they're saving 15% for retirement, well, their paycheck is taxes are withheld, FICA taxes, payroll taxes, their medical insurance premium comes out of there, all that kind of stuff, right? And they're left with, okay, this is my net paycheck. And that 15% that went to their 401k or Roth 401k has already been taken out and accounted for. And it's an afterthought. Once they're signed up with the 401k, a lot of people just never change it. They just get so accustomed to living on that net amount that they don't even think about how much money every month, every paycheck is going to the 401k. Those are the people that I see that do the best. And the way I see, and I tell this to clients all the time, let's say you're saving 15% into your 401k, assume it's this retirement tax, just this tax that you have to pay that, oh gosh, 15% is going out to the 401k. I don't have a choice on that. To make my retirement successful, and that's going to be different for everybody, of course, but just imagine the money you're putting in your 401k or Roth 401k is just like a tax that you have to pay. Again, a lot of times this is just behavioral finance. Sometimes it's tricking ourselves or kind of playing a little mind game with ourselves in order to have the outcome or the future that we want or we desire. So with payroll integration, Contributing to your 401k is very, very easy. They've made it absolutely simple. You can pick the percentage or dollar amount each paycheck. I mean, it's very, very integrated. And a lot of the 401k providers have very good websites, others not so much. So hopefully your 401k company has a very, very good website that is easy to navigate and make changes if need be. But definitely get that username and password and get some help from that 401k provider if you need to. Don't be shy of calling them and asking for assistance. Now, the other thing I'll mention with old 401ks, this has been a problem for a lot of people that I've worked with, is they have these old 401ks that they forget about. They don't monitor and they're, again, out of sight, out of mind. They don't review them like they should. And sometimes it makes sense to consolidate them to their new 401k. So all the money's in one spot. There's other people where it makes more sense to roll it over to what's called a rollover IRA, where you have more investment freedom, investment selection choices. So if you're one of those people out there that has an old existing 401k from a former company, keep in mind that those are some options that you have. Of course, if it's over a certain dollar amount, you can leave it there. There's no requirement to move it anywhere, to roll it over anywhere. But for a lot of people, they end up neglecting them and not considering them almost in their entire retirement nest egg portfolio. So consolidation can make sense for some people. If you didn't hear, the Secure Act 2.0 is going to have a database of old 401k plans. So if you thought you had an old 401k somewhere and you just lost track of it, well, good news for you. I think I have been promoting this idea, campaigning this idea for many years 
There needs to be a 401k database where people can check back into, like a lost and found of 401ks, where people can find those type of accounts. Because I can't tell you how many people that maybe they just work for a company for a couple months or a couple years back in the 90s or the 80s, and they lost track of the plan. So the feds were going to be working on that 401k or retirement plan database. So check into that if you're interested and that applies to you. So hope this conversation has been helpful today with 401k plans. I might have a second addition to this because there's a lot more that I wanted to cover, but I'm trying to keep these podcast episodes to a reasonable amount of time. So thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions, visit my website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. I'll see you next week. And remember, always dream big. The opinions voiced in this material are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, please consult your attorney, tax advisor, or financial advisor prior to investing. This is a hypothetical example and is not representative of any specific investment. Your results may vary. All performance referenced is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All indices mentioned are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. The Smart Vester program is a directory of investment professionals. Neither Dave Ramsey nor Smart Vester are affiliates of St. Louis Retirement Advisors or LPL Financial. There is no guarantee that a diversified portfolio will enhance overall returns or outperform a non-diversified portfolio. Diversification does not protect against market risk. All investing involves risk, including loss of principal. No strategy assures success or protects against loss. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, Memra FINRA, SIPC. Thank you for listening to the show today. Check us out at our website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. And if you want some help from Greg, submit your questions at the bottom of the page or sign up for a 30-minute retirement coaching session with Greg. We'll see you next week.